In this video, we're going to look at a new template rule called the reference rule. The reference rule comes up in complex data definitions that involve more than one type, and it has a significant effect on the overall structure of our program. What we're going to do in this video is to walk through an example of a world program that involves the reference rule. We'll go through some parts of the world program design quickly because it's quite similar to other world program designs. We're going to focus in particular on the design of the data definitions and the design of one of the functions based on the data definitions. Okay, here we go. The program we're designing is a timed and colored countdown program. So the way the program works is that we start by counting 3, 2, 1 in green, 3, 2, 1, 0 in green, then we count 3, 2, 1, 0 in yellow, and then we count 3, 2, 1, 0 in red, and then it all starts over. So let's do our domain analysis. Well, the usual kinds of things are constant. The width and height of the screen, the center X and Y where the number is displayed, the font size, the background is black, and every time we start the count, we start it at 3. What's changing? Well, what's changing is the number and the color of the current number. And what are the Big Bang options? Well, the program is changing with time, so we're going to need on tick. And the program is displaying something, so we're going to need to draw. So that's our basic domain analysis. If we now switch to looking at the starter file, the timed light starter file from the website, we can see that we've started to do the structure of the file, we've got the requires, we've got a short description of the program, and we've got some relevant constants. And then we come to the data definitions. Okay, so switching back to our domain analysis, because of course what the data definitions need to do is represent the changing information, we can see that the changing information again is the number. The number and the color are both changing. They're the changing information. So now we can go back to Racket and design a data definition to represent that changing information. Okay, let's design that data definition. So let's see, we've got the number and the color. And those are two pieces of information that naturally belong together. They're both properties of the changing countdown color. So we're going to want to use compound data to do that. So let's start by defining ourselves a struct. Maybe we'll call it define struct TL for timed light. And it has a current color, and it has a number of ticks left before it changes color. So that's the actual struct. That's just the data. But now we need the rest of the data definition. So let's say that timed light is, and now it's going to be a make TL, but now we need to decide the types of the two fields. So what are the types going to be? Let's see, we know the color is one of green, yellow, or red. So what should we put here? Well, we could put string, but of course we don't want to do that. Because then if we put string, somebody could pass any old string they want, including strawberry. And that's not one of the colors we have in mind. We could also put color, because color is a primitive racket type for all the different colors that the 2HTTP image library knows how to work with. But again, we don't want to do that, because somebody could put magenta, and that's not one of the colors we want to work with. We want to work with a very fixed set of colors. So actually what we're going to need here is another data definition to handle that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pretend there's another data definition called TL color. And I'm going to right away go and do it. I could make a wish list entry and come back to it, but I'm just going to right away go and do it. So let's see, now we're doing TL color. And what is TL color? Well, TL color is just a straightforward enumeration of the kind we know how to do, it's something like it's one of red, 
or it could be yellow, or it could be green. And we'll interpret this to mean the current, the color of the light as shown by the two HTTP slash image primitives. Because it's really those primitives that are going to tell us what red means when it shows up on the screen. Now it's an enumeration, so we're going to say that examples are redundant for enumerations. And at this point, I think you know pretty well how to do a template for an enumeration. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that template. I'm just going to throw the template up here. There's one case for red, one for yellow, one for green. And I'm going to leave the template rules out now just so that in the video we'll be able to see everything on the screen that I want to see at the same time. So now we've got TL color done. And we can go back over here to where we were. We were really in the middle of doing T light. And we had said T light is make TL. The color is going to be a TL color. And now we know what that means. And now we have to decide what the ticks are going to be. Well, let's see. The ticks are 3, 2, 1, 0. And actually, when we did the domain analysis, we identified a constant, which was the start ticks. So right now, start ticks is 3. So we count 3, 2, 1, 0. But we could change start ticks to something else in the program. So this is really going to be a natural number somewhere from 0 to start ticks. So let's put that here. Natural 0, comma, start ticks. Now we've just made a very important design decision. We've decided to have a type T light which is compound data, and which refers to another type TL, color. So for the color, we have another type TL color. But for the ticks, we decided to just use an atomic non-distinct. We're going to see later this has a big impact on the program. Let's finish. Let's finish this data definition. So we need to say interp. So what's the interpretation of this? Well, it's a light with the given color and number of ticks until next color. And here's an example. Define TL1 is make TL, let's say, red and 1. And now let's do the template. And here's some interesting things that are going to happen because of the fact that we've defined a type that refers to another type we defined. Let me get the template started. It always starts fun for TL, TL. And we can always start by writing template rules used this way. OK, so let's see. What is the first template rule we're going to use? Well, we go to the first word after is. And what we have here is the constructor for compound data. So the first rule is going to be the compound data rule. And what I'm going to put here after the colon is just a note that the TL structure has two fields, bing, bing. And what I'm going to do up here, if I go look at the template rules for compound, it says that I put in all the selectors. So I'm going to put in all the selectors for TL. It's going to look something like this, dot, 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 TL-color of TL, and tl dash ticks of TL. And that's what the template is so far. But what I'm going to do now is I want to make a little note here that says that the TL color, 
This right here is telling me the type of the color field. So it's telling me the type that this selector is going to produce. So that selector is going to produce a TL color. And this is telling me that the type of the ticks is natural zero to start ticks. So that selector is going to produce natural zero to start ticks. So I'm going to put that there now. Putting these types here now just helps me with the next step of the templating. Later on when you're better at doing templates for compound data like this, you don't have to write these down. You can just do it in your head. But I find it's very helpful to write them down at the beginning. Okay, so now I followed the compound rule and I know what each of these selectors are going to produce. If I go back to the template rules, it says then consider the result type of each selector and it shows that you can annotate them this way. And now I'll just walk you through the rule here. Because this type is what's called a non-primitive type, it's a type that wasn't defined by racket, it was defined by us. We use another rule called the reference rule. Okay. And we're using the reference rule because the color field of TL has type TL-color. What the reference rule is going to tell us to do is it's going to tell us to wrap around this selector a call to fun for TL color like that and I just deleted I'm just deleting this note now because it's done the work it needed to do for me so because this produced a TL color we put a call to the TL color template function right there now let's go to this one well this is a primitive type and in particular, it's an atomic non-distinct, okay? Because the ticks field of TL has type, it has this type right here. And because this is a primitive type, we're not going to wrap it in an extra helper call. We're just going to leave it just the way it is. So that'll stay just like that. And I can get rid of that. So that's the template for TL. Now I want to show you something quite important here. Let me just get set up to draw on the screen here. If you look at the type comments, you see that the type comment for T light has what we call a reference, and we'll label this arrow with R for reference. There's a reference from this type comment to that type comment. References always go from the place where we refer to a type to where it's defined, which is the word right before is. So there's a reference from there to there. And if you now look at the templates, you can see that there's a call from TL's template function to TL colors template function. And you can see that these two arrows are congruent to each other. They happen in exactly the same place. Right here where there's a reference to TL color in the corresponding place in the template, there's a call to TL colors template function. And this is going to turn out to be very important. It's going to have a huge impact on the structure of all the functions that operate on a TL. Okay, so we've designed the data definitions for the changing information of this world program. We've seen that there's two, that one's a compound and then it refers to the other one. And then that has a big impact on the way the template works because this reference produces that call to the other helper. YouTube videos can only be 15 minutes long. So we're gonna to have to stop here. And in the next video, we'll look at designing functions that operate on TL and see what impact the reference rule has there.